Hey, it's no secret. Tom Mulcair loses his temper occasionally. That's why he's known as Angry Tom. In recent weeks, he's developed some rather odd and contradictory positions on the idea of Canadians using Canadian oil from Alberta as opposed to importing millions of barrels of crude every year from Saudi Arabia, and Algeria, and Venezuela, and Russia. Angry Tom was in favor of Central and Eastern Canadian folks using Canadian crude instead. N not, a, not a bad position, many of us thought, until he changed the position. Uh, the NDP's PR people are concerned about his public disposition much more than his policy positions. They know that anger may sell well for the occasional talk show host, may work, may work well for a prosecutor from time to time, but they know that the public wants a little bit of affection from their leader. They want to smile. They want daddy to like them. So this week, the NDP released a, a daddy likes you kind of ad. Take a look. Tom comes to politics because he cares about people. His love of people, his love of family really guides him. People always ask your father in politics, you must not see him often and stuff like that. And honestly, no, I never felt that. He was uh, a great coach. He was always uh, fair to everyone. He's a friendly fighter. I think it's exactly what Canada needs. He will listen and deliver. This is our moment to work together and build bridges to show Canadians that they can vote for the change they want and actually get it. Yeah, you get it. Daddy likes his kids and, and his country. Anyway, what you need to know is this ad does not discuss why Mulcair has a habit of changing positions on things that are actually important. The ad doesn't tell you he has a history of this, and so maybe Daddy has a bit of a problem, not just with temperament, but with integrity. To tell you the truth, he appears to have a, a big problem with integrity. It's time for some Canadian common sense. Thomas Mulcair, according to information supplied by the New Democratic Party, was elected nearly 20 years ago in the provincial riding of Chamedy, which is the biggest population center in the city of Laval, Montreal's biggest burb. More than 400,000 people live there. Sun News anchor Karen Lieberman used to live there. But she's got nothing to do with this story. She just happened to live there. Thomas Mulcair lived there, and he's a crucial part of this story. One of his constituents was a mayor, a fellow by the name of Vaillancourt very successful local politician. He was mayor of this giant suburb for more than 20 years. He left office under a cloud last fall. There's been a commission of inquiry in Quebec investigating the clouds, investigating corruption in the construction industry. Corruption involving construction company executives, bureaucrats in several municipalities, and provincial governments. Corruption that has touched a lot of construction business and political business not difficult to see why construction bosses would want to grease politicians. After all, there are so many billions of dollars of contracts that governments award to build infrastructure. And Mr. Vaillancourt was quite the builder. Over the years, he was able to lobby for more than $15 billion worth from the feds and the provincial government, which Mulcair was part of. Now, there's an allegation that's been made by a witness at an inquiry saying Viancourt was making two and a half points, two and a half percent, on every buck in construction contracts his city was awarding. He needed political help in his lobbying efforts. So it's not unusual uh, that he would go to Tom Mulcair at least once to try to get his help. And according to Mulcair, at least once, Viancourt tried to bribe him. No word on how much money he tried to give him. I have no way of knowing whether... Mulcair was insulted, thought it was too little, too much, but there's no evidence he ever accepted the bribe and no evidence he was willing to take responsibility for even being offered that bribe. There is evidence he denied being offered the bribe. As we've told you here on the Sun News Network, our own Brian Lilly put the question to him directly. Mulcair denied it. You might have heard of uh, allegations of the mayor of Laval handing out cash and envelopes. Uh, were, you, were you ever offered cash in an envelope by the mayor of Laval? Did you ever see cash in envelopes around the mayor of Laval? No. And one thing preoccupies me with that is that a person who went on to become justice minister and public security minister felt that he couldn't do anything about it. In my career, the only time anybody ever came up to me with an issue that they described had happened to them that would have constituted an offense, I invited the person to go to the police. And when they said they had they, they weren't sure if they could do that. I said that I would do it myself, and I did. I went, and it had nothing to do, with, by the way, with uh, Laval City Hall. It was an issue involving somebody uh, in the work that I was doing at the time. 
except he's changed his position now, and no, he didn't go to the police. Police came to him nearly 15 years later, and he admitted it to them. Anyway, Mulcair held on uh, to this secret. Uh, the, he was bathing uh, the truth in secret sauce, you might say, for so many years, and in doing so, protecting one of the biggest hoods in Quebec, allegedly, who ripped off the public for millions of dollars, allegedly, money that might have gone to more worthwhile public needs, uh, helping people get into low-rent housing. I mention that because that's always a favorite bobble for those politicians with a social conscience like Mulcair. That's the PR. Anyway, the secret's out. And Mulcair's good at keeping a secret for a while and enabling corruption and waste and fraud and abuse of the public until police forced the issue, which they did a couple of years ago, and he fessed up to them. And a few weeks ago, he fessed up to the public about this. He changed his story when the story just didn't add up. He changed his story when he was forced to, when he was outed. Folks, I grew up in Quebec. I don't want to sit here and pretend I've never met a greasy politician. I mean, that's as, that's as common in Quebec as, as Molson's. It just is, and it usually gets the Quebec shrug. Another greasy Paul, another greasy construction company executive. We, we had names for the politicians who sometimes did keep the envelopes and sometimes didn't, but never dropped the dime on those who represented the sewer money. I won't repeat what we called them. Not here. Not now. But I can reveal this to you. We never called them future prime ministers. That's Canadian common sense.